Hey yo, what is going on viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler and welcome to the channel that knows every market cycle investment is built on some sort of manipulation. But just like Sean McGuire knows, we gotta give this kid direction. Yeah. He can contribute to the world and, and we can help him do that. Direction's one thing, manipulation's another. There is always a way to find direction in a world of manipulation. You know the drill. It's time for Chico Crypto. Well, throughout the beginning of the week, some very interesting things happened to the Bitcoin price. Traders across the board do not know what to think. So what happened? Well, to begin, the CME Bitcoin futures gap needs to be explained. So CME Bitcoin futures are the fiat backed and settled futures contracts launched in December of 2017. Fiat backed and settled means there is no Bitcoin involved in the process. And it is just speculating on the price of Bitcoin in fiat usually USD. Unfortunately, this is a complete break away from the economic rules of the Bitcoin blockchain and gives large institutional investors, usually tied to the banks and the top 1%, an avenue to provide downward pressure on the Bitcoin price. That's what CME Group makes possible. And because of this fact, something usually happens called the CME gap. This is when the price on the CME exchange falls behind or stays above the spot price on Bitcoin on all the other exchanges across the globe. Regular crypto exchanges never sleep, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But since CME is a regulated futures exchange in the US, they have trading hours, 5 p.m. to 4 p.m., Sunday through Friday, with settlement at 3 p.m. So CME closes at 4 p.m. on Friday and stays closed until 5 p.m. on Sunday. So over the weekend, the global crypto exchanges usually pump the price while CME is closed, creating a gap until settlements resume on CME. And throughout the history of CME, these gaps eventually get filled as the price of Bitcoin comes back down. Here's a chart with CME gaps throughout this year. Gaps began to form when the pump started, one at the 5200 range and one at the 6400 range. The next one was at the 8000 range, and then immediately after that, the 8400 range in June. This one got filled five months later in early October, and every other gap has been filled on the pump up except those first two, and the one all the way to the right, the most recent one, a gap between 8,600 and 9,350. And here is where very interesting price action began, and it is a pure sign of manipulation, with two camps fighting for manipulator control. Everyone thought that because of the gap when CME resumed trading, a crash was going to come, down to the $8,600 range. Statistician and highly recognized market analyzer Willy Wu of Wu Bull Charts said this in regards to the gap being filled before CME opened. I think so. BTC has a tendency to fill volume profile gaps and especially gaps in the CME. We still have time to burn before the BTC rocket ship takes off, so a high chance to do that while the price wanders sideways in consolidation. This has been an almost guaranteed trade in the past, so Sly Guys far and wide open shorts that they thought were going to be major winners. Well, here's the price chart, with the Bitcoin price the white line, and the CME price the red and green bars. As we can see, the price across crypto exchanges barely budged, while CME crashed down to a low of $8,364, a flash crash, before rebounding right back up. And those Sly Guys, they are pretty pissed. Here's a good Twitter thread to see the traders that opened up shorts. Scammy as fuck. Ridiculous. Loss of words. And Adolf Hipster saying, first time. Just like planned, over the past 24 hours, a large amount of shorts got liquidated on BitMEX, even though the price barely moved on the unregulated crypto exchanges. Ordinary? Nope. But many BitMEX whales just got wrecked. And here's what needs to be understood about what happened on CME. Going back to the chart of the crash and looking at the CME trading volume, there is a mass explosion in volume over 180 million that happens right before the crash. But if you switch to the one minute chart, it looks like it was part of the entire move, right on schedule. But in actuality, the volume traded before it dipped under 9K, while almost nothing was traded in the lower price ranges. Makes sense? Well, this is a prime example of market manipulation in CME, and it's called painting the tape. But, but wait, Tyler, I thought market manipulation can't crash the regulated markets. Oh yes, yes it can, and it will. Painting the tape is an illegal activity that is prohibited in all security and commodity trading markets because it creates an artificial price that the manipulators take advantage of. 
High volumes always attract the attention of investors. By painting the tape, you increase volume, which then draws in other investors, who then push the price higher or lower, the direction the manipulator was pointing to. A short-term tactic, but can make the manipulators millions in a snap. In this case, CME manipulators were pushing volume down, getting rid of their holdings at the higher price, attracting other investors to contribute while they take away all the volume. Remember the chart, barely any volume was traded during the crash, and it was traded before. Then after, they buy on the way up at a lower price than they got in at. Interesting to see, after the crash, the volume was green, all buys at lower prices. And you know what the weird thing is? Unregulated futures exchanges got attacked in a similar way, just before CME, on October 31st, Halloween. BTC's spot price dipped from 9,260 to 9,055 bucks in quick succession on Coinbase Pro. Spooky! With number one Bitcoin analyst on TradingView, Jacob Canfield, warning everybody and saying another exchange, Darebit, flash crashed to 7,700. Although, he does show his Bybit link below. Kind of pathetic. But yes, the Darabit exchange at the same time crashed down from the 9,200 range to the $7,700 range. And then one more, the BTSE futures exchange pumped to 15K, then dumped all the way down to 6K in a matter of minutes. So were the big dogs testing the waters on the unregulated markets before doing it on the regulated markets? That is what it kind of looks like to me. And it's possible a Bitcoin tether bull has their paws in the regulated space. So I've been shining a light on this for some time. Mike Novogratz of Galaxy Digital made a massive block trade on Backed that takes place OTC and off the market to not affect the Bitcoin price. But that is Backed, not CME. Well, Mike is connected to CME as CME Group is building a blockchain gold platform with AlphaPoint and Mike and his hedge fund are investors in the same company. I have no proof, but I wouldn't doubt for a second Galaxy Digital and Mike are trading on the CME platform. I mean, why wouldn't you when CME pays you to through their passive volume market maker program? And of course, in July, it was found out that Mike has had contact with Bitfinex and Tether when the New York AG released evidence of them serving New York customers, especially Mike's Galaxy Digital. So what's next for the Bitcoin price? Well, there are three gaps from CME that need to be filled now that the flash crash took place. There's the bearish gaps, which I showed earlier, one at the low of 6,400 and the other at a low of 5,200. Regular market participants, the bankers, the elite, the 1%, they want it to go this way. I mean, back in 2018, the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco put out research and concluded the launch of CME futures crashed the price from the 20K peak. But then you have research from John M. Griffin and the Min Chons, a paper titled, Is Bitcoin Really Untethered? First released in 2018 which concluded by on-chain research that Tether and Tether issuance were the reason for the Bitcoin pump up to the 20K level, concluding it was manipulation and not organic. Well, howdy doody. Just yesterday, Amin and John released the updated version, last edited on October 28, 2019, and they have closed in on the culprit. According to them, by mapping the blockchains of Bitcoin and Tether, we are able to establish that one large player on Bitfinex uses Tether to purchase large amounts of Bitcoin when prices are falling and following the printing of Tether. The flow is attributable to one entity, clusters below round prices, induces asymmetric autocorrelations in Bitcoin, and suggests insufficient Tether reserve before months end. Rather than demand from cash investors, these patterns are most consistent with the supply-based hypotheses of unbacked digital money inflating cryptocurrency prices. They don't conclude who the manipulator is, but strongly suggest Bitfinex executives either knew of the scheme or were aiding it. But who is John M. Griffin and Amin Chomps? Well, I took a look into it when the first report was published back in June of 2018. Let's watch my amateur self with Chut Chong and a brew now. Who are these trailblazing researchers and where did all of this uncovered information come from? If you're not like most people and actually read the article, you'll find that the study came from a couple of college students from the University of Texas. John M. Griffin, who is a teaching assistant, and Amin Shams, a PhD candidate. And looky here, it looks like old Johnny Boy has ties to Bank of America. Hmm, paid for FUD by the banksters, especially Bank of America? 
Also, this is the big news media outlets throwing the shade, and it does seem like a bit of a premeditated attack. Here is another kicker. The data supplied that was the basis of the research was produced by the consulting firm ran by John Griffin, and none other than the entity who dropped the original article, Bloomberg Business. So John has connections to the banks. Bloomberg and his consulting firm is providing the data for these studies. So these are the guys who want to see the bearish CME gaps filled. But remember, I said there is three. One bullish gap, the pink bar at the $11,800 range. And some tether bulls are trying to make sure this happens. Cheers. I'll see you next time.